Hello and welcome to a new video about pneumatic controls. Last time we talked about embossing something, so really shape something to apply a certain amount of force depending on the material I want to emboss and yeah, this was our last task. Yeah? Today we think about gluing two things together. Yeah? So we press two things with maximum possible force However, we not, do not want to just to press it and release it. We want to press it, hold for a certain amount of time and then release the pressure and move away the cylinder again. Yeah? This is usually how you glue two things together. Apply force, wait until the adhesion is big enough, yeah? until it's securely glued together, to two, piece, two, yeah, two pieces <laughs> and then release again. Okay, this is our task, and this here should perform the task. Yeah? I've put again, made again a little drawing. Yeah? So we have here now the cylinder. We can adjust the time of the cylinder yeah? with exhaust air uh, throttling, like we mentioned. We have this control element of the cylinder, and we have the the control elements yeah? with to the logic. Let's analyze this, this here for a little bit. Eh? So, this is obviously the start button. Eh? If we press the start button and BG1 is also pressed, eh? so this means if the cylinder here's BG1, here's BG2, so these are limit switches of the cylinder MM1, if the cylinder is fully traveled inwards, it will touch this BG1 and if I then press this button, I have here pressure, I have here pressure, the two pressure valve here applies pressure to QM1. Yeah. So the first thing which is happening, press button, SJ1, yeah. if BG1 is pressed by MM1, KH, what was the version, KH3 had will have pressure at output. See here, just notice I've forgotten to label this. So these are the one connectors and this is the two connector. So at the two connector of KH1 there is pressure eh? which will lead to the fact that QM1 is switching. So QM1 is switching now. QM1 is switched. This means I have pressure at the 2 line. I have no pressure at 4. This means MM1 is traveling. So this is the second thing which is happening. Second step. QM1 is switched. MM1 is traveling. This would cause BG1 no longer to be touched. Okay, so BG1 is released. If BG1 is released, I have here no pressure anymore. I have here no pressure. This will stay because it's an impulse valve. Eh? So this is actually the third thing which is happening. BG1 is released. No pressure. Add 1-2 connector.
of QM1. QM1 stays impulse valve. All right, impulse valve. Huh? Because at 1.4, there is no pressure currently. Yeah? Because it's here, there's no pressure. It is relieved here. Yeah? So QM1 stays. This means MM1 is traveling further. Yeah? Which will then lead to BG2 will be operated. will be operated okay so pg2 now is operated this is released this is operated and we got pressure here huh? three if pg2 let's move this a little bit to the side huh? let's have a look at this huh? four pg2 is operated Pressure at one two connector of KH four. Uh, this is this this is this valve. Uh, pressure at one two connector of KH four. So here we got pressure inside. There is this throttling valve. Uh, so this pressure will only stream very very slowly inside. Uh, depends a little bit on how this is adjusted and will slowly start to fill the storage here. Huh? Once, there's a, I always forgot the spring, there's a spring of course. Huh? Once this pressure has risen above a certain level to overcome the load of the spring, yeah? then this will switch. But this will take a while, okay? Because the, the, the spring will press this in this direction, so we really has to build up pressure here, and then we're able to switch this. Yeah? So this is what I'm writing now. Yeah? Pressure will Build up takes a while. This is what exactly what we wanted. Yeah, since we are feeling this rather slowly, yeah, because we really throttled it down, yeah, it will take a while, and we can adjust how long with the help of this throttle. Yeah? Takes a while. Okay. Then. Fifth, after pressure inside of KH4 is strong enough, the three two way valve. of KH4 will switch and this will lead to the fact that the 1-4 connector uh, here it is 1-4 connector of QM1 is under pressure QM1 switching back. Okay, QM1 is switching back. So back, switching back. The next thing which will happen is, if you look at here, yeah. So QM1 is switching back. So we were filling up this. We will release this. So it is traveling away. The next thing which is happening is that BG2 
is released. Yeah? So the thick thing, yeah? QM1 is switched back. MM1 is traveling in. This means BG2 is released. If BG2 is released, uh, this will get immediately out of pressure. Uh, this we, will, we have no pressure at all because it's a, it's a check valve here, uh, throttling check valve. And this will switch back. Uh, so 1.4 is without pressure. Uh, BG2 is released. This means KH4 will switch also back. Huh? So this means 1.4 connector of QM1 is without pressure. So the 1.4 connector now is then without pressure. Okay. QM1 will stay because here is no pressure. So we will stay and that's it. QM1 stays. MM1 travels further. So no issue there. We're just traveling further. And then, last but not least, 7. MM1 will operate PG1. Dark. Huh? So we and with the traveling completely in, MM1 will then operate the PG1 and this will press and we are at the beginning. Huh? That's it. Huh? So this this control logic, pneumatic control logic. This pneumatic control logic yeah, is doing exactly this. And we analyzed it together. So now we know how those limit switches and so are working. Next time we make another logic, next time we will move several cylinders in a certain pattern. Yeah, so we will want to move one cylinder and then caused by this movement another cylinder and so on. So we want to have a little bit a chain of, of events there. Yeah? How we can realize this in pneumatics will then be next video. Yeah? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.